Hello and welcome to the very first episode of my channel. Today I'll explain to you more or less the history of the chair. First of all, let's define what a chair is. What constitutes a chair? So, a chair is defined as a piece of furniture with a raised surface, supported by legs, commonly used to seat a single person. A chair without a back or armrest is called a stoop. A chair with arms is called an armchair and sounds freaking scary. Or freaking adorable. Alright, let's presume that the need to sit down didn't come with the invention of the chair and people most probably used to sit down on different things before a chair was invented. So, what was the earliest known chair? When does the history of the chair begin? So the very first historical source for a chair used for sitting surprisingly comes from a statue of a chair. In the Aegean Sea there are around 220 islands called the Cycladic Islands. In these islands lived an ancient civilization called the Cycladic people. Now this civilization were really into making sculptures, figurines and art in general. And it's from one of these surviving sculptures that we also find the first historical proof of a chair. This figurine, which is dated between 2800 and 2700 BC, depicts a musician playing a harp while sitting in what looks like a typical kitchen chair, with straight back and four legs. For the oldest surviving physical chair, however, we have to travel to Egypt. Dating around the year 2600 BCE, this chair is the oldest surviving chair in the world. Currently exhibited in the Cairo Museum, it belonged to a queen of Egypt called Hetephris I during the 4th dynasty period. It was discovered in the 20s by American archaeologists. In ancient Egypt, sitting had to do with your social status. The lower strata of the society sat on shoddy stools or on the ground altogether, while the aristocracy and elite sat on fine chairs with backs for spinal support and armrests. Other noteworthy old chairs are the supposed Chair of St. Peter, exhibited currently and probably forever in Vatican City. In the 5th century BCE, the ancient Greeks invented a new kind of chair called the Klismos which featured curved legs and a curved backrest. This type of chair became so popular that in most ancient Greek art you find people or gods sitting in these chairs. The Klismos disappeared for millennia from the chair scene and reappeared much later as part of the Greek revival movement in the late 18th century and early 19th. During ancient Rome, a special chair without a backrest called the curule seat was used as a symbol of political or military power. This tradition carried on by other kings in Europe, most notably Napoleon. In Rome, the curule seat was traditionally made of, or veneered in, ivory, with curved legs forming a white X. Although it was a luxurious piece of furniture, the curule seat was made intentionally uncomfortable to sit on for long periods of time. The symbolism being that the official was expected to carry out his public function without being too lazy sitting on his ass all day, and also to remind him that his office was only temporary to ruin his potential imperial ambitions. For the Republic was Salih forever, we all know how that turned out. Another type of chair worth mentioning comes from the Aztec civilization and it was called Iqbali, although sadly not much is known about this particular piece of furniture. In the Middle Ages, sitting on chairs was the same as in the Egyptian times where not everyone could afford to sit on nice chairs. So ordinary people used whatever resembled the chair to rest their weary legs, be it a bench, a barrel, or even the goddamn ground. And once again, the fine chairs with arms and backrests were reserved for the elites and aristocrats. During this age, common by tables were long benches, as shown in this picture. It is worth it to note that not all civilizations preferred to sit on chairs. Some cultures enjoy sitting on the ground or, you know, sitting on air. <coughs> Russians. In a classic study of human posture around the world, the anthropologist Gordon W. Hughes identified no fewer than a hundred common sitting positions. Aside from the obvious squatting slops, this method of taking the load off your feet with a powerful deep squat is favored by people in Southeast Asia, Africa and Latin America. Many South Asians cook, dine, work and relax in this position. Now with the chairs came back pains as a chair is a rigid structure usually made from hard materials, while the human body is much squishy. 
The human posture on chairs and the connection between the two was first recognized by the 18th century French physician Nicolas André de Beauregard. He was a pioneer in the field of orthopedics. He even coined the term we use to this day. In a treatise he wrote in 1741, he describes the connection between healthy sitting posture and chairs. When one sits with the body bended backwards, the back must necessarily be crooked inwards, he said. And when one sits upon a hollow seat, the effort which one naturally makes and without any design to bring the body into an equilibrium must of necessity make the back still more crooked. With the term hollow seat, he referred to the concave hand-woven seats of ordinary chairs which sagged over time, so he had an idea. André proposed adding an adjustable screw that would push up on the seat from beneath to keep it flat. In 1884, a German orthopedic surgeon called Franz Staffel noted that the chairs were constructed more for the eyes than for the back. And for this problem, he proposed a low back press that supports the lumbar region of the spine. He recommended that when you sit, your back has to resemble as closely as possible the double S curvature of the spine when standing upright. Staffel has been called the father of the modern school chair. In the 19th century, primary education became mandatory and children had to spend more and more time in the classroom sitting on chairs. Many wacky designs were proposed for the school chair, some included forehead restraints, some included face rests, and some included seat backs. In 1913, the Swiss anatomist Hans Strasser published the design of a chair whose upper backrest was slightly angled and whose seat was slow to better support the underside of the thighs. Strasser's findings were confirmed 35 years later by Bengt Akerdo, a Swedish researcher who used X-rays and electromyograms to study the body mechanics of sitting. Akerblom designed several chairs whose bent backrest became known as the Akerblom curve. While now, in modern times, there is one king of the chairs, one undisputed king of the chairs, We've all seen it, we've all sat on it at least once. His Royal Majesty, the Monarch. Many of you probably didn't know that this chair is called monoblock, but it's ridiculous how widespread this chair is. The monoblock is lightweight, stackable and made of polypropylene and not surprisingly is known as the world's most common plastic chair. Apparently it was designed by a Canadian designer called B.C. Simpson in the year 1946. Variants of this one-piece plastic chair began to be produced in the 1970s, and since then millions have been manufactured in countries all around the world. This chair is surprisingly enduring and surprisingly cheap, costing around $3 to produce, which made them affordable across the globe. Media scholar Ethan Zuckerman noted, Monoblock is one of the few objects I can think of that is free of any specific context. Seeing a white plastic chair in a photograph offers you no clues about where or when you are. Hey guys, if you like the video, prove it by actually liking it. And if you want more content like this, try subscribing to my channel. It will motivate me to make more videos like this on different subjects. It took me a long time to make this video, so I would be very glad if you took the time to like, comment and subscribe.